Why have you got a YouTube channel? Why are we watching you on YouTube, Kirk? <laughs> Watch, what's the story? Well, in this video, I want to tell you why I'm here, why I've got a YouTube channel, what the point in it all is, and everyone wants to know how much money does YouTube pay you for your YouTube videos? Let's get into it. So let's start at the beginning, right? <clears throat> of plastering for me anyway let's start start the story right at the start so i grew up on a little council estate and i started high school and my old man didn't want me knocking around with all the riffraff because things were going on you know kids were getting to into deep trouble and what have you so my old fella wanted me to sort of go to work with him, you know, keep me out of the trouble and teach me the trade and uh, and spend a bit of time with me. So I was quite lucky, really, in that aspect. Um, I started working with my dad on the weekends when I was about 11 or 12 years old, you know. And I probably got in the way more than anything else at the start. <clears throat> but I enjoyed it, you know. We'd sit in the front of the van on the way to the jobs and he'd talk to me. And he was quite interested in what I was talking about, you know, and I was only talking... Flipping nonsense at the time, but he gave me the time of day. And it was quite nice having my dad's attention, you know. I could have his attention all day. Um, yeah, it was good. I was getting paid. I was earning a couple of quid. I was only getting, you know, a fiver or a tenner a day. But when I come home, um, I was like little Mr. Rockefeller. You know, all my mates had like a fiver's pocket money. And I had like 40, 50 quid in my pocket because I'd been working, hadn't I? So that was good. Um as time went on, you know, I was getting better. I was picking it up. By the time I was about 13, I could skim walls and stuff. You know, I was I was plastering. So uh, that that's the beginning. That's where it started when I was just a little nipper. Now, I wasn't meant to be a plasterer. <clears throat> in my mind, from the very start, I was going to go in the army. That's what, as a little kid, that's all I wanted to do was go in the army. You see, I, I, um, I grew up boxing. So my old fella used to send me boxing. Me, me dad, I love the bones of him, by the way. I genuinely love the bones of him. Me dad was, how can I put this? <laughs> me dad's a great fella. He was a violent man, you know. Any issues and and he sorted it out with this, you know. Um, so you can imagine when, <laughs> when we were kids. I mean. Lovely, lovely fella, me dad. But after a few beers, you know, if you'd upset him, <laughs> ooh, you were getting it. Now, I he sort of sent us boxing because he didn't want us being a pair of wet lettuces, me and my brother. So we had to go and, you know, learn the Queensbury rules ourselves, as you want to put it. In fact, I could tell you, like, we could go into loads of stories. Flipping heck. Where, where we lived, there was, um, you know, we, we were on a rough council estate, so there was always altercations and the way my dad would deal with it was if, if if i sort of come home because some lad had you know picked on me or something well the next morning at half six i was getting dragged out of bed because me and my old fellow were coming around your house <laughs> yeah, i was crapping it most of the time you know i get bunged in the back of this little fiesta vroom, boof, 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 boof. get your son out here now my son's gonna fight it you know and that, that's how i was brought up so it was a bit um it were a bit full on. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, flipping, yeah, bringing back loads of memories. To be fair, like the old fella. I mean, he, he was flipping fantastic. He still is. He's still flipping just as crazy now. He hasn't calmed down. He's flipping in his sixties now. He's still as mad as a box of frogs. Like he's flipping. He's just a hundred percent all the time. You know, if you upset him, you know straight away because he's ready to kill you. But um, great fella. Flipping, fantastic at plastering. Just a hot-headed guy. So, yeah, so he sent us off boxing. Um, the plan for me was I was going to um, I was gonna finish school, I was going to join the army, and I was going to go and see the world and box for the army and, and you know, whatever, get a trade in there. I didn't, I didn't think that far ahead, but that's what I was going to do. And uh, I, I was inspired a little bit because my mum's dad, um, my mum's dad, he was a PTI in the army. So for anyone that doesn't know, he was a physical training instructor. He was the guy 
we was flipping cap down like that, shouting at you, you know, more press ups now, you know, one of those type of fellas, proper man's man. And and he ties into my story actually, um, my mum's dad and my dad's dad. Um, my dad's dad, lovely fella. Um, I never got to know him. And this is all part of why I'm on YouTube, by the way. It all ties in. Me, me dad's dad was deaf from the age of seven. Smacked his head in the playground in school and stone deaf. Couldn't hear a thing. So he had a limited sort of vocabulary that he knew up until the age of seven. And then, you know, anyway, I don't really know much about him. And this is this is the thing, you see. Me, me, me mum's dad was a PTI a strong man's man, you know, you wouldn't mess with him. In fact, he, he, he was a docker after um, he was a docker after he come out of the army and he fell down a crane because he worked in the cranes, you see, and he fell from the top of the crane right down the cage to the bottom and broke his back. The fella had the broken back and he had a leather corset that he used to have to wear. He wasn't paralysed, he used to strap himself up with his leather corset and he carried on. This is the sort of fellow we're talking about, you know. He wasn't like signing on the sick, and he he would uh, he'd race the kids, flipping. They'd ride the bikes around the block, and he'd race them. And I've got all these stories about him, and I've got all these stories about me 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 dad's dad, uh, how he drove an ambulance, you know, and was in picking up body parts and all sorts when you know the war was going. Anyway, this is the whole point of why I'm on YouTube, though, because all I've got of my grandparents stories and pictures and i never got to know them because they died when i was dead little you know like um me me dad's mum and dad didn't have me dad till late until they were in the 40s so when i come along you know they were like popping off so i never really got the chance to get to know them. and this ties in i will get to this i will get to this so what i was saying was I wanted to sort of go in the army um, because I'd heard stories about my granddad, so that's where that came from. And I wanted to box for the army. Now, how's things happened? When I left school, um, just as I was sort of leaving school, <clears throat> I was as fit as a flea. You know, I was training flipping seven nights a week. I was doing all sorts. I was, I could already plaster. And just as I left school, I went away and I did my selection for the army. I went in, uh, to Bassingbourne, I think it was called. Um, no, sorry, I was meant to go to Bassingbourne. I went to Litchfield. I went to Litchfield and did my selection. Any of you fellas that have been in the forces, I mean, you correct me, yeah, it was Litchfield I went to. And I did me, um, I think I was there for two days. <clears throat> and I was 15 at the time. I had a school and I was 15. I was one of the youngest in the year, you see. I was born in July, so... I went there and I did my selection and um, I remember I was number 52 out of my bib and I flipping smashed it because I was fit, you know, I've been flipping boxing my whole flipping teenage life. I was like a whippet. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I went and uh, beasted that and I got a, a, a date to go in. I got my date and I was going to go to the boys army, um, sort of like you had to go to couldn't go in the proper military because I wasn't 18. I had to go into a, a, a lower tier. Um, I don't know, it was a long time ago trying to remember the exact details of it all. But anyway, as all this was happening, I get my date through the post. And it had all sort of recently kicked off with 9-11, you know, and up, troops were f going out to flipping go and fight the Taliban and stuff. And um, my old fella, he, he had a bit of a word of me. He said, look, so, you know, I don't want you to go out there. Uh, I want you to join the army and do what you want to do, but I don't really want you to go out there now because, you know, you're just a just a lad, you know, and you're my baby boy. I don't want you to go out and get shot straight away, you know. Why can you not join later on when there's a time of peace? And he sort of talked me out of it, you know. He sort of, sort of put it to me, look, come and do, come and work with me for a while full time. And when all this calms down, then go in the army, you know, when when it's all sort of chilled out a little bit. So, so that was the end of the army, basically, because once you once you start doing something, I mean, trying to change lanes, it, I don't know. Yeah, so 
that was the beginning. That's how I got into plastering. I sort of got blagged into it. I could already do it and I got blagged into it. Now, the thing was as well, because I could already do it, this was a bit of a downfall for me because <clears throat> I wasn't the fastest. But when I went on the building sites with my old fellow then, uh, we got into doing site work. One of his mates got on the building sites because his dad, my dad always did private work. But I said, if I'm going to stay, I don't want to do private work. I want to be on the building sites. Um, because I'd met a few of my dad's mates that worked on the sites and they were quite, they were good blokes, you know, and I wanted to be around them. Um, as I said to you, my dad loved the bones of him, but when you live with someone and you work with them, you know, you're always with them and he's quite a hot-headed fella. So I just sort of wanted to mix it up. That's the best way of putting it. I didn't want to be permanently stuck with me dad. <laughs> if he ever watches this, he's going to think I'm, shit for saying this but i didn't want to just be stuck with him permanently all the time because you know flipping it you're sort of like on eggshells with the fella so i wanted to be around other other plasters you know that that i got to know so we ended up on the building sites his mates got us um a start with a house builder um and that was it we were on the on the sites then so we're on the building sites and it's all um it's all dry line it's all Board, dab and skim, that's all we did. Uh, but my old fella, he was old school, so, you know, we'd go and do little private jobs at the weekends and I'd float and set rooms and, you know, we were doing all sorts of different stuff, a bit of lime work and pebble dashing and uh, my old fella did all, like, fibrous plastering in college and stuff, you know, so we were doing little bits at the weekends and stuff. <clears throat> so it was great. I got a great sort of broad knowledge, but I was sort of brought up... Um, Board dab and skim. Whereas my old fella, he was like old school, you know, it was all float and set for him in his day. So when we come on the sites, my dad didn't take to it so quick because, you know, it was all, it wasn't what he was used to doing, you know, just dry line and houses. Uh, he didn't really fancy carrying 500 plasterboards in every morning, you know, before breakfast, before we got started. So, uh, he, but he did it for me. He did it for me and my brother as well. Um, so he stuck it out as long as he could. But don't forget, I could already plaster at this time. I could. I already had sort of uh, the basic skills. We just needed to put a bit of meat on the bones, you know, just start to understand how, you know, the money worked and and uh, that sort of stuff. So, my old fella took me as, as far as as far as he could, as far as he was um, willing to go because site work. Any lads that work on site, I take my hat off to you. It's hard, hard graft. And we were quite lucky because the, when I landed on site, when I first got on the building sites, uh, we were paid day work. So that was quite a relaxed atmosphere. Um, I had a chance to learn. Now, I was, I was trying to be as fast as possible. I mean, when you're young... You get any young lad, right? And they're just, it's just in you. You're full of testosterone. You want to be the best. The fastest, the strongest. So I was just trying to blitz as much plastering as I possibly could every day to sort of try and show off. Look how good I am, you know. And uh, my dad would just laugh. <laughs> He's just thinking, look at him, the little tit. <laughs> Go on, son, hurry up, get it done. So that went on for so long. And then eventually, um, I think the fellow we were working for, he had about, I don't know, I think he had about 100 plasters working for him. Dave Waring. If any of you has ever come across a fella, called Dave Waring. Um, they were from Haydock. Lovely, lovely man. That fella is a genuinely good guy, and I've got nothing for respect for him. Nothing but respect for him. That's who I worked for on the building sites. Top bloke. Um, but eventually, I think he was like... Um, I think he was looking and thinking, I'm not making no money out of these lot, because I was going like the clappers, but... <laughs> My old fella wasn't, because he's a bit too long in the tooth to just pull his nuts out for nothing, you know, because we're on day work, so he was just sort of ticking over, you know, spent more time smoking fags and looking out the window. But anyway, this fella, he must have thought, I'm not making any money here. So he, he put everyone on price, and I'm about 18 at the time. So we all get put on price work, and that's when my dad sort of said, look, son, I'm not cut out for price work on building sites, you know. Uh, he, he's he's knocking on a little bit at this point. He said, I, "I'm I'm done. I'm going back to private work." But son, you know what the score is. You can do the job. You know, my dad 
made sure I had my driver's license and all the rest of it. I knew what I knew what I was doing. I'd moved out at this point. I, I moved in with my missus when I was 17. Um, and that was it. The old fella left me and I was sort of like in at the deep end on my own. So <clears throat> we had a lad work for us. Um, great, great lad, John Hardin. Hope he doesn't mind me mentioning his name if he ever sees this video. But a uh, lad from Chester. You know what? Fantastic fella. Got many, many a fond memory of John. Flipping great. Great guy. He used to call everyone Ace. <laughs> but uh, So that was me. I'm 18 and I've got me, Plastra, and Ace. Johnny Ace, as we used to call him, because that's what he said to everyone. He's working for me. And that was the beginning of me. In at the deep end. <clears throat> now, at this point, my dad told me, you are either going to go two ways now, son. You're either going to sink or you're going to swim. It's up to you to make a man of yourself. Now, I didn't want to let him down. I didn't want to let myself down. I didn't want to let my missus down because I'm man of the house here. I'm, you know, I'm bringing the, the money in. So at 18, I had another fellow working for me and we we set to it like, and I was like a dog with a bone, you know. I was on site at um, 7 o'clock every morning. The site didn't open till 8, but I used to have a word of the um, the security guard and he was, I was on the building site early. And I tell you what, I flipping blitzed it. Uh, I ended up with my brother-in-law working for me <clears throat> a year or two later. There was a team of three of us. Um, not trying to blow my own trumpet now, but we were three young lads. We were all hungry. We were all keen to do as best as we possibly could, and we were smashing it. We were smashing out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of metres. We were just blitzing houses, boom, boom, boom. And what I like to do was... My dad was always there clean and tidy. Wasn't the fastest plasterer in the world, but he was clean. Everything was spotless, right? <laughs> My old fella was... I had to sit at the back of the van. I wasn't even... I wasn't allowed in the front of the van because I was too dusty for his van. His van was cleaner than me flipping car. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he was. A, he's got OCDs, my dad. And if you got something messy flipping it, you get battered for it. So you just kept it clean. But anyway, um, because of this, sort of this was instilled on me to leave a clean job. So we were smashing through houses, trying to leave the best, neatest job as fast as humanly possible. And leaving the job immaculate as well. So the site agents loved us. And uh, I was making some great money, you know. Even then, the prices weren't great. I think, um, if I think back now, I think it was about... I think it was about £2 a metre skimming, about £2 a metre boarding and dabbing, you know. So, about four, four or five quid. But I don't know because, I'll be honest with you, I never measured the houses and they used to give us a price per house. So you'd say, right, that house there, that's a, you know... a a large dale or whatever that's worth two thousand quid to you so i'd write that in my little book and i knew every time i did one of them that's what i'd get for it and and we'd just get stuck straight into it and everything was about efficiency i used to lie in bed at night this sounds sad i'd lie in bed at night and think how to be more efficient how can i make this faster you know and what we come up with is you never need to stop there's never nothing to do. There's always fresh water to get. There's always something to clean. There's always, you know, something to scrim up or bead or cut. So there's another house to load up, you know. So we just work like absolute machines. Yeah. Crazy days, man. Probably took a few years off my life the way I worked back then. <laughs> right. I'm looking here now. I'm only on, like, flipping. I've got a little list of what I wanted to get in this video and i'm only on i don't know point for being point two <laughs> i'm like 10 so i'm going to speed up i'm going to keep it concise and i'm going to get i want in this video everything i wanted to say so the next thing i wanted to tell you about was how it how it begun with me um really getting into me plastering so i'm on site i'm blitzing through it and then the um the crash came you know 2008 Ah, oh, the recession, first recession I'd ever gone through. All the building sites shut, so straight away off site, and um, and I'm sort of like you know scratching around for work, didn't know what to do. <sighs> I didn't want to go and work with my dad again, um, because 
you know, he'd sort of said, you'll have a sink or swim, son. So I want, you know, I had this in my mind. This is a few years later now, but I still, you know, I've got to look after myself here. Um, by this time, you know, I've got a missus and a, and a baby. So I really wanted to, to, to prove to him and to myself that, you know, I could look after myself and keep these lads in work as well. So we started doing private work. Um, and that's a different ball game. I've done site work for years at this point. Now I'm doing private work, which is completely different, really. It's a lot slower pace, and there's a lot more variables that you've got to, you know, overcome. So, a couple of things happened. Um, one, I started advertising like mad. I went and got loads of flyers printed. Now, my dad always told me, if you're good, son, if you're good, you don't need to advertise. The problem I had is, no one knew who I was, so... Yeah, that's great. You don't need to advertise once your name's around, but when no one knows your phone number, then you do. So uh, I went and got a load of flyers printed, <clears throat> and I'd do a job, and I'd post flyers in every house in the street, and I'd go out at the weekends. I'd even got my missus and the little baby and would park up somewhere, you know, <laughs> like they've been travellers, you know, and I'd go around posting flyers everywhere just to sort of get the jobs in. And it it worked, you know, if I posted like a thousand flyers, I'd probably get one phone call. So that meant, you know, another day's work. Um, and at the same time as this, I was, I love plastering and I loved it more back then. It's sort of wearing off a bit now, but I really did. If I do something, I want to do it well. So in my mind, if I wanted to call myself a plasterer, then I, I should be able to do anything that a customer requests of me plastering that was our me thought process so there was a lot of stuff that I'd, I'd sort of touched on with my dad but I, I hadn't mastered and I didn't want to go back and start asking for help so what I started doing was I started buying books so you might recognize these JB Taylor read it loads of times I'm a bookworm by the way I love reading um, Encyclopedia by Peg and Stag. I started reading these books because I was trying to really improve myself. Now, this is the the the, the daddy of all plastering books, uh, William Miller. Uh, let me see if I can show you the front cover of this. Plastering, plain and decorative by Miller. Now, this book here is not. It's teaching you how to make. Nietzsche's and all sorts of you know cornice. I mean, there's no mention of multi finish or board finish in these because it just wasn't even invented then. Um, there's a book by Varel, the modern plaster. I mean, it's not that modern because again, it was all lime plastering, but anyway. So, I started trying to educate myself as much as humanly possible. I wanted to know the ins and outs of everything, I, I didn't. I didn't want, ever want a customer to phone me and me say, oh, I don't know. So I was reading this stuff and I was practicing at home. I was, I was running, a, I was running Cornice. Now at the time, my house was a council house, <laughs> right? So I'm living in a council house and the council are coming out to do jobs. And I've got all this ornate plastering on my ceilings. <laughs> they must have been thinking, who the fuck lives here? Michelangelo or something? <laughs> oh yeah so I, I was going a bit flipping crazy with you know how, how fancy i could do stuff but there's not really any call for it i mean i don't really ever get called to do any of that sort of work but i can do it you know and i wanted to i wanted to learn how to do it so i can do all the fibrous stuff you know i've practiced i've had built a workshop and a you know made flipping millions of ceiling roses and stuff and no one wants it because everyone wants everything nice and square and modern looking usually. But you get the odd thing, you know, and it's quite nice to sort of flex your plastering muscles and, and show someone what you can do. So, yeah, that was that. Oh, it's worth noting as well, me, me wife's dad, uh, he's a steel erector. And he used to be able to get in the fabrication shop. And I don't know what fancy equipment they had in there for metal, but I used to give him a cardboard template of... Um, of a moulding, you know, that I'd want to use for plastering or uh, or special little tools uh, I'd use for the angles to make a bird's beak or a cock's breast. If you don't know what they are, they're worth Googling because it's it's really good stuff, you know, it's interesting stuff that I was learning about in books and bits I'd picked up from my dad. 
And uh, I was given these cardboard templates to my father-in-law, who didn't have a flipping clue what what I was doing with these things. But I was giving him these little bits of cornflakes boxes, saying, "Oh, make me one of these," you know. And he was he was doing it in his coffee breaks. He was making all these fancy things for me. <laughs> and I was meeting him, you know, after work for a, a pint to have a pint with her dad, and he'd get, he'd say, "Oh, son, what do you think of this?" Like, and I'd go, "Oh, perfect," you know. So yeah, most of my uh, most of my tools, like me, Mrs.'s dad made me. <laughs> oh, another thing as well. Whilst um, whilst all this was going on, I I was um, I was posting me flyers everywhere. I was there was no there was no sort of there was internet, but it there wasn't an internet then. You know, it was the internet existed, but no one was on it. You know, um, <clears throat> so I was going round and I had all these plastic signs made. Uh, Johnstone plastering systems. I wanted to sound like I was a big company. You know, look at me. I've got lads working for me. I'm a big firm, you know. So I had this big sort of like, you know, um, title that alienated it from a person. It was like, I was a, a business, you know. And I had these plastic signs made. And I went all around where I live and I was putting them on all the traffic lights, you know. Plastering systems. Call this number. <laughs> and... <laughs> Anyway, I got a quite, quite a bit of work out of it, but I'll tell you one of the uh, the main phone calls that I got was the council phoning me up saying, if you don't take all these signs down, we're going to take them down and charge you, mate, and you'll be flipping paying for it. So, so yeah, I spent, I spent about a month putting them all up and about an hour taking them all down again. But uh, that just brings me to another point as well. For any young lads watching this... Um, I wanted everyone to think I was dead successful, you know, in my 20s, dead successful, I've got a big firm. But the fact of the matter was, what I found was, when I was working for the public, the building site fellows want that. The building site fellows, you know, the, the, the big house builders, Wimpy and Red Row and Persinum and all that, they want a big firm because they want one man that they can deal with. So they can just put a pinch on him. If they want something doing, they can just pressure one fella and he does it. Um, but people that you work for, in average, you know, Mrs. Jones next door, people buy from people. Um, so so if you're going to the domestic market, I wouldn't, I personally, my advice to you would be don't try and advertise yourself as a big company because people buy prefer the personal touch you know do you like you as a person to the buy from you think about that you know i i i probably lost a lot of work where i could have um if it just been me if it just said look my name's kirk you know i'm a nice fella i'll do your plastering i probably would have got more jobs rather than trying to um put this big image out there that i had loads of lads working for because the fact of the matter is people want you the professional to come and do the job, not one of your hoppers, one of your workers, you know? So, yeah, think about that. And as well, I did uh, I did try and get a load of fellas working for me. But do you know what? Flipping heck. Any of you boys that have got, like, more than five lads working for you, I take me hat off to you. When you've got... You, you think you're going to be a plastering boss and you have all these lads working for you, the fact of the matter is, right, you are going to become... Alcoholics Anonymous, a marriage counsellor, a flipping guidance counsellor, you spend more time trying to rehabilitate your work crew, <laughs> keep them on the straight and narrow, than organising jobs. Trust me, you're just putting out one fire after the next. I don't know if it's just plasterers or if this applies to everybody, but from my experience, having a, a few plasterers work for me over the years, well, when I was younger especially, because I was trying to, as I said to you, I was trying to get this big business. I wanted to be like a millionaire. <laughs> Loads of plasters working for me. I tell you what, it's it's like herding squirrels. You won't get much sleep. So for me personally, I learned quite early on in my twenties. I'm gonna have a much less stressful life just sort of being me and maybe having one or two lads work with you. You know, work with you. That's the key. Don't don't tell them they work for you because they'll flipping drag their knuckles on the floor. They work with you. We all work together. You know. So anyway, I've been working along then for a good few years and more daughters have come along. I've got three daughters, by the way, and they're all gorgeous. 
I'd love to show you pictures of them so you can see how pretty they are and they're very smart. But um, they're all quite shy and they wouldn't appreciate me putting them online for everyone to see. So anyway, but my daughter's come along and life's been quite good up until this point. You know, it's had its ups and downs. I mean, no one's life is straightforward. Flipping heck, I've had flipping hassle with a tax man. Flipping all sorts of stuff's gone on. But, you know, life's good up until this point. And, and this is the reason I'm on YouTube now. I'm getting I'm getting to the point. So if you've hung on this far, we're not far off the reason that I'm here. Um, life's gone great. And then my youngest daughter's 11. And out the blue, last year, my missus said she's pregnant. We hadn't planned this. And we said we were done with kids. I thought I was destined to just have girls. And that would have been me happy, you know, to live out the rest of my life. Um, but she's she's told me she's pregnant. So I'm thinking, here we go, another girl. Now, as it turns out, I've got a little boy, my little son. <sighs> Flipping. <laughs> it's amazing. Genuinely amazing. The little fella now, he's... Uh, He's a little tank of a fella. You want to see the hands on him, you know. He's got flipping massive hands, you know. And he's uh, he's four and a half months old now. So this gets me thinking then. I've got me boy. <sighs> my dad wanted lads. He wanted us to be plasterers, you know. Now I've got this little lad and I'm thinking, do I want him to be a plasterer or don't I? So I've... <laughs> So this is why I've made this YouTube channel really because I don't know what this lad's going to want to do when he grows up. And I want him to do whatever he wants in life. I would like him to learn to plaster. But if he chooses not to do it, then that's fine. But I'm getting on a little bit now, you know. I'm like in my late 30s. And I'm thinking when he comes into his prime and about, you know, 20 years time, I'm going to be like in me, getting on to my 60s. And I already know at this stage of my life that my enthusiasm for teaching is starting to wear off a little bit. I think all the flipping lunatics have had work for me over the years. It's took its toll because I've got a young lad work with me now and I, and I sort of go home sometimes and I feel bad that I haven't sort of shown him as much as I could have done that day. So I'm thinking forward, I'm thinking down the line, when I get my little lad, he might not want to learn straight away, and, and I'm not getting any younger, so how am I going to convey to him all the stuff I want him to know? So I had this idea. See, my missus, she loves photographs, my missus. We can't go anywhere without having your picture took. And she used to have all these albums, and she used to camcord and everything from when the kids were little and all sorts, and... And she gave it to this fella to put on a DVD. And unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but he, he managed to lose them anyway. So she was gutted. So what my missus does is, so she never loses any of the kids' pictures, any of their family pictures, or anything like that, she puts it all on Facebook. She uploads it all to Facebook, to a private album. Because her thinking on it is, Facebook's always going to be there now. It's never going to never gonna go. So she stores all of our family pictures forever on facebook and that way if you ever want to see the pictures you know she can just sort of add you to the album um which brings me on to another little thing really because this is my thinking with my granddads you know all i've got of my granddads i never got to know them and all i've got of them is just a couple of pictures and a few stories and you know you can press your parents so much to tell you but i mean there's only so much they can tell you. You don't really get the flavour for someone, do you, from a picture and from a story. So I got to thinking to myself, when my little lad was born, it just sparked a thought process off that I would like my grandchildren and my son to sort of be able to get to know me, even if my toes are facing upwards, you know. They can sort of get a feel for the type of guy I was, you know. They can... They can understand the pain I went through to leave them when I'm going to leave them. <laughs> if there's anything left, I might drink it all. But they'll be able to get a bit of a flavour for the type of guy I am. Um, 
and I didn't want to just put it all on sort of personal DVDs because as we already know they can get lost so I thought to myself if I sort of make videos about what I do day to day and upload them onto YouTube then they're there forever you know and then I was thinking to myself well really I'd love to write a book but I think if these fellas could have made videos that everyone could have seen instead of writing a book they would have done videos because videos explain things better than books so I think in our day and age the best I can do is put all my life's knowledge onto video format for me lad if he wants to learn and I'm too old or my grandkids they can learn now <clears throat> That might sound morbid, and it probably is because I'm already sort of planning my death. <laughs> but it's not that. It's just, you know, I just think I wish I had videos of my grandparents to look back on or my great-grandparents or, you know, wouldn't it be great to be able to to look now if you could click on and, and see, your, your, you know, your granddad's parents and watch a video of him explaining himself and, you know, you, you think I'd probably like him if I could get to know him. You know, if he wasn't dead, I'd probably get on quite well with him. So that was the thinking about the... Um, YouTube videos, so I uploaded them. Um, you can have I haven't deleted the first couple of videos I did, and um, and what happened was I put a couple of videos on, and I wasn't really thinking about you guys. I wasn't thinking about anybody sort of watching it. For me, I was just thinking I'll just start documenting my life, and I thought no one would really be that interested in it, so I never paid any attention to it. But as it so happens. <clears throat> I ended up with a couple of subscribers and and then people were sort of asking me questions. Now I'm the type of guy that if I drive past someone broke down on the motorway, I'll pull over and help them. Um it's just it's just in me nature. I can't help it. My missus always gives me stick because I tip too much when I go places and you know, I, I flipping give the livery drivers flipping bonuses and all I just can't it's just how I am. So when people are asking me questions, you know, I'm answering them, even though the videos aren't really for them. And now, looking back, now when our YouTube works, because I'd never really uploaded a YouTube video before that, I could have just set them to private, but I didn't really know what I was doing. So I'd already sort of started this ball rolling because I had subscribers and these people were talking to me and I'm talking back to them. And, and then I sort of feel like I'm obliged to carry on <laughs> so that's how we get to where we are now so the plan was never really to make youtube videos for everybody i was just sort of doing it like a little bit of a legacy you know a little bit of a autobiography sort of you know so future generations of my children could sort of get to know me and if i'm too old to teach me lad when he wants to learn that he can sort of I can show him a few plastering bits and bobs. That's where we are. But then it just sort of becomes a bit of a flipping beast because you get this little app when you upload things to YouTube. And when I started to pay attention to this thing, it's got like little graphs on it and it's showing you how well your videos do. Well, then it's sort of like, you know, showing, oh, this video isn't doing as well as your last one. Oh, flipping heck. I'm the type of person that when... Someone starts telling me it's like, it's like a computer game, you know. I'm I'm like I want to win, <laughs> so it's saying like you know, this video is ranking eight out of ten. <laughs> so then I'm like, I need to get better at this because I don't. It, any YouTube creator will tell you these little charts and graphs they, they get inside your head. So I've started then to try and make better YouTube videos, and then another plaster has messaged me and he's got his YouTube channel. Trial Talk, Stuart is a flipping fantastic fella. But he messaged me and he said to me, um, are you monetized yet? Now, I hadn't even considered that I could make money doing this. <clears throat> We're getting to the money. I hadn't considered money at this point. So, but he's planted the seed now. So I've started looking, what do I have to do to get monetized? And the requirements are you need a thousand subscribers 
and you need 4,000 watch hours, which means you guys have got to watch my videos for a total of 4,000 hours. And I wasn't far off it. So I started looking into YouTube monetization and what it's all about and how much money, you know, and it all seemed quite intriguing. So this wasn't the end goal, but I'm thinking, well, if I can make a quid, then why not make a quid? You know, I'm doing it anyway if I can get paid for it. And when I started looking, here's the thing. <clears throat> this is what really spurred me on. Because I don't like no one making money on me. <laughs> YouTube, when I started looking to the monetization, you watch my videos, yeah? YouTube put adverts in them. And then the ad revenue they share with me, they take half. And, well, it's about half. I think it's like 50, 40. No, 60, 40. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. You can Google it and find out yourself. But they make a few quid and I make a few quid when I'm monetized. But here's the deal. I hate adverts. Hate them. So I'm a YouTube premium subscriber. I pay extra. I pay like £11 a month so I don't have to watch any flipping adverts. Now, I've been watching my videos back and there was no adverts on them, you see, because I'm a YouTube premium subscriber. So I never realised that YouTube, the sneaky little scoundrels, they had put adverts in my videos and if you're not monetized, it just means that you don't get paid for them. Now, I didn't want any adverts on my videos originally because I thought to myself, I don't like watching them. I wouldn't want to inflict them on anybody else. But YouTube put them in anyway. When you're not monetized, you just don't get a cut of it. But regardless, they're going to put the adverts on your videos, whether you're monetized or not. So I got to thinking to myself, well, I, if, if, you're being, if you were being forced to watch them videos, I want a slice of the pie. So, I set about getting monetized, which means <clears throat> I'd have to get more subscribers and I'd have to make better videos to do it because I need just to watch me for 4,000 hours. So, hence, here we are now. So, what I was doing was to try and get me, um, me subscribers up and to try and get more watch hours, <clears throat> to try and get my channel out there a little bit. Uh, because I wanted a slice of this flipping ad revenue that YouTube would inflict on people. I was posting some of my videos onto Facebook in different groups. And I was putting them on a, a DIY group, you know, just to help DIYers. Because I thought, well, you know, the videos are out there anyway. If the more people that see them, I suppose it helps more people, which people leave me. This is the thing as well. This is, a, this is the addictive part for me. I make a video... And people leave me all sorts of lovely comments saying how much it's helped them. That for me is like, I mean, I'm doing this day to day. I'm, I'm doing the job anyway. And I'm making these videos anyway because I want to make them for my son and, and sort of like have them uploaded. If, if I'm going to do it, I may as well do the best I can possibly do. So I am trying to get better, by the way, all the time. I'm always trying to improve what I'm doing, you know, because if, if a job's worth doing, you should try your best. And people are leaving these nice comments, you see. And it's quite addictive because people are saying, thanks, oh, you've really helped me. And that makes me feel real nice, you know. I'm thinking, I'm making a bit of a difference for people, which is is good. So I'm uploading these videos to Facebook then. I'm, I'm putting a link from YouTube to Facebook. And then a couple of people, well, it was actually one that started and off, messaged me and said, oh, you know, could you make a video on such and such? So I, I does it, I does it, does the video, and then straight away after that, he said, oh, um, can you send us um, your, your bank details? I want to say thanks, I want to give you a few quid, like I really appreciate that. And I didn't really know what to, anyway, the same person said, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's normal practice, like, you know, there's a, um, Loads of YouTubers that we follow and they, you know, you can sort of tip them if you want to tip them like, you know, and they've got different apps and stuff, but you haven't got one. And then they sort of recommended this um, buy me a coffee app. So hence, um, I just thought I'd put it on there. You can buy me a beer if you want. I mean, you don't have to. I don't expect it. <laughs> It'd be nice if you do, but there's no obligation. So that's how I ended up with that as well. Um 
So yeah, up to now it's been <laughs> it's been quite good. I get some lovely comments. A few people have bought me a pint. <clears throat> but you want to know about the YouTube revenue, what I've actually earned up to this point. Well, today's date is the 19th of January. I got monetized. My channel uh, qualified to receive money on the 5th of January. So up until this point, all the videos that I've done, they've all been out there and they've all been like, you know, earning away. I've had some quite good ones as well that have, you know, they've got like 20 odd thousand views on one of them. Um, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but for me, for looking at the views on the other videos, that one's really took off. Like, you know, how to skim a wall the easy way, <laughs> if there's an easy way of doing it. <laughs> but anyway, that's... Um, <clears throat> So I'll get to it now. I'll show you how much I've earned in this, this space up to now. So as it currently stands, I've got 34 videos on YouTube. Now, my first couple, I just sort of bashed them out because I didn't really know what I was doing. But then I've tried to get better and better. And I've been editing them, um, and I've been trying new things. And I've done more and more. Sorry, a bit gassy. I'm having a beer whilst I'm uh, telling you. I've been... Editing them and, and it started to get quite time consuming, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm an outgoing guy. I love um I love being around people and stuff, but I also love my own space as well. So I've built um like a workshop in my back garden and this is my little office that's in the end of the workshop, you know. It's quite cozy. I've got a little toilet and a, a sink and it's all insulated and heated and it's just how I like it. You know, it's a little man cave and uh Probably be me lad's little den when he's older, you know. He'll probably like it in here. I've got all my internet and my TVs and PlayStation. I've got everything just where I want it, you know. Um, so I, I've been spending loads of time in here editing these videos. And one video that you watch for maybe 20 minutes takes me somewhere around about four or five hours to edit. I mean, <clears throat> probably because I'm useless at it and I have to redo things <laughs> Give me a trowel and I'm all right. Give me a smartphone and it all gets a bit flipping anyway. So I've got 34 videos at the present moment. I've got 1,758 subscribers. And I just want you to know, I genuinely appreciate every single one of you. I mean, if you've subscribed to my channel, then it means a lot to me because it it makes me feel like, you know, I must be, I must be a likeable guy if you lot want to listen to me so thank you for subscribing makes me feel good i've had 124.2 thousand views and 7.5 7 500 watch hours so all my videos that you have watched that's amounted to to that amount in time which is quite a lot really i think <clears throat> and for the privilege up to this point YouTube have paid me the grand total of £92.78. So, I'm not going to be retiring anytime soon as a YouTube star. But look, I, I haven't made this channel to try and get rich or be a YouTube star. I, I want to, I want this to sort of be a bit of a legacy, sort of a thing that me, Future generations can look back on my son, my grandkids, my daughters, lads. They can sort of what I wish that I had had from my grandparents. I I really wish I could have got to know my granddad, both my granddads, both of them, what I consider proper men, you know, strong men. Um, I would have I would have liked to have got to know their personalities, what they were like, you know. Would they have liked me? Would they be proud of me? So, I'm sort of making these videos because I think if they had had the technology that I've got, they potentially would have done it. And then on YouTube, because they can't, the phone can't get lost and they disappear. You know, the memory can't get wiped and they're gone. Hopefully, on YouTube, they'll last forever. You know, the same as our, if I'd wrote a book, it gets republished, like the um, book from Miller. But the thing is, I can see the way we're going in the future. I'm a bookworm. I love reading. I don't think um, kids of the future 
I think books are going to be a thing of the past. I think it's all going to be video format. So I'm trying to sort of stay, you know, ahead with the trend. Um, I'm sort of future proof what I'm trying to do. Hence the videos. So yeah, that's my story, guys. That's that's the top and tail of it. I wanted um, I wanted to put that straight out there because I've had some comments, people saying, you know, oh, uh, you know, sort of like instigating that there might be a bit of rivalry between me and some of the other plastering channels on YouTube. And genuinely, I mean, I don't see anybody as a rival to me. You know why I'm here. So whilst I've got me a bit of youth left in me and a bit of knowledge in the brain, you know, before I start forgetting stuff, I want to put all the sort of knowledge that I've built up over 20 plus years of plastering and put them on video for me lad, so he can always look back in the future, you know, I can always sort of be teaching him stuff without him having to ask me, because I was a bit fearful to sort of embarrass myself and ask me dad, um, so here's my take on it all, son, if you're watching this in the future, uh, this is how I did all these different bits and bobs, so always all the videos for that, if at the same time it benefits you guys, then that's a bonus for me. I genuinely love helping people, so I hope you're enjoying it. I mean, YouTube has started giving me a couple of quid, so that's amazing. Um, you can buy me a beer if you want, but, you know, it is where I don't care if you do or you don't, but I th thank you if you do. I started doing that, as I said, because people wanted to give me um, a little tip but didn't have a means to do it. So that's just set up for if you really want to, but I don't really care if you do or you don't. Look, this is how it works for me. I'm a plasterer. I go to work every day and make money plastering. Um, so I don't I don't need money from YouTube or, or anything like that. That That isn't the reason that I'm here. Um, but if I can help you along the way, because I'm sort of like, I'm in it now. I can't really, I feel like I'm obliged to carry on because I've sort of, there's like a little community building up. I mean, there's, I'm not going to name names because I don't know if how they feel about it, but there's a there's a, a certain amount of people that are in the comments section in every video. And I feel like I'm starting to grow like little internet friendships with these people. I mean, some of the things they say have been just, you know, I, tell, I get excited and say to me, Mrs. Oh, such and such has said this. You know, she... She just looks at me like, oh, all oh, right, yeah, one of your internet mates. <laughs> but, I mean, I know the real people on the other end that are saying these kind things to me. And I really, it makes me day, it genuinely does. So, if I'm making these videos and they're benefiting you, then all the better. I mean, I'm, I'm trying my best to make them even better now because I've sort of got the bug. This whole YouTube algorithm is like a computer game that I'm sort of feel like I'm competing against now. You know, I want to sort of like keep improving and getting better and going to the next level. Um, so that's where we are. It's the 19th of January, 2023. That's me YouTube story so far. I mean, who knows where we'll go. I'll keep you updated. Guys, as always... <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up to help me beat the algorithm. If you think it could help someone else, share it. Because it's a kind thing to do if you can help someone, help them. But whatever you choose to do, I appreciate you watching. It makes me feel good. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Cheers.